Well, Turks mad. Joe Biden has made them big mad. Hope I was successful in sounding like one of these hip young Biden supporters, uh, because today I actually uh, am happy about something that he did. And so in this, uh, in this case, I do support Uncle Joe Biden. Now I know because this is the internet, I'm going to have a lot of uh, very patriotic Turks in the comments section uh, uh, yelling at me and, you know, giving me thumbs down, which is fine because, you know, that gives me more interaction and boosts me in the algorithm. So I don't mind that. Go right ahead, you know, show your, uh, your disapproval all you want. But from, and I'm not trying to tell you about your history or anything. I have a completely, um, uh, so I, I have a, a perspective on uh, this move by Joe Biden that is sort of independent of the actual question of whether or not there was an Armenian genocide. Now, personally, I do happen to agree with it. I understand that makes Turks upset. And you know what? My opinion doesn't really matter uh, as far as Turkey and Armenia and their relations are concerned. None of my business. So I, I ask you just hold out your um, your anger in for just a couple minutes and hear me out on my justification as to why I'm happy that Biden said this, um, even if, you know, again, this is not an issue that um, you should be taking my opinion too seriously on, the actual historical question. What this shows, the fact that Biden um, uh, was able to uh, make this move and obviously, if, if this is a statement signed by Biden, somebody else in the White House wrote it. This was a concerted, this is a part of a broader policy. This is not just something that Joe Biden said off the cuff, you know, on a hot mic at a press conference uh, with like the Armenian president or something. It's not like was Joe Biden was just hobnobbing with the Armenians and he said, oh yeah, it was terrible that when, when, when the Turks genocided you. This was not, you know, this was a planned out, um, telegraphed, trial ballooned statement uh, that was put out by the White House, and it is therefore um, reflective of a broader White House policy. Now, in order to understand the implications for that uh, for American foreign policy, you have to look back to all of the past presidents of the United States um, and why they never recognized the Armenian genocide, despite heavy pressure from the Armenian American lobby. It's not like foreign lobbies are weak in Washington. They're very strong. Just look at the strength of the Israel lobby, uh, the uh, Gulf Arab monarchy lobby. Uh, you know, if you sort of combine the Saudis and the Emiratis and all these, you know, and all, all of the, the Gulf oil states, they have a very strong foreign lobby. For a long time, even the Irish Republican Army uh, had a, a good bit of sway here in the United States. Nevertheless, the Armenian lobby was never able um, to uh, get a U.S. president to strongly condemn uh, what happened back in 1915, which they see uh, as a genocide, uh, a, a label that I, again, that I personally agree with. And the reason for this is that uh, the Republic of Turkey uh, has, uh, since uh, you know, the 50s, been an important NATO ally to the United States, and they have seen uh, uh, Anatolia as a landmass, as an important uh, base of operations uh, for the American empire. And so therefore, uh, no U.S. president would want to antagonize Ankara um, by stepping on such a, uh, you know, a third rail issue um, and really uh, upsetting uh, U.S.-Turkey relations. Uh, if the U.S. still has troops in Turkey, I'm pretty sure uh, it's a very large base there, That at least at one point. And again, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, that they're still there. The only reason why I question that is because Biden made this statement. It seems uh, a, a little um, odd even to me that he would make this statement uh, without getting all of the U.S. troops out of Turkey. Well, the point is the U.S. is um, a base of operations in Turkey. Um, has been used in the past to uh, try and deter the Soviet Union. The U.S. Uh, back in the 60s had uh, nuclear weapons 
in Turkey. This was a big part of ending the Cuban Missile Crisis is that, um, you know, the Soviets put missiles down in Cuba right underneath the United States. The United States had uh, nuclear missiles in Turkey right underneath the Soviet Union. Um, Armenia was a part of the Soviet Union, uh, just uh, <clears throat> something to keep in mind there at the time. And in order for uh, Khrushchev uh, to pull uh, missiles out of Cuba, uh, the Kennedy administration had to concede that they would pull uh, the uh, nuclear missiles out of Turkey. Later on, in uh, 2003, um, Turkey was a, uh, essential, using their airspace was essential uh, to the U.S. invasion of Iraq. Turkey also, if the U.S. decided to launch a full-scale war uh, against Syria, Turkey likely uh, would have been an important staging ground uh, for that. And likewise, if the U.S. decided to go to war with Iran, I'd imagine that Turkey would play uh, some role as, again, a base of operations uh, for moving troops around. Now, of course, the U.S. does have many, many other bases. You've got Iraq, you've got Qatar, Saudi Arabia. Um, all of these places are uh, important uh, to the United States, but Turkey plays a big role. Um, and if uh, Biden is willing to antagonize the Turks to such an extent, it tells me that this administration has no plans um, uh, of going to war in, uh, in and around the Middle East um, ever again. Because again, even if, uh, the, you know, let's say there's some theoretical war where Turkey doesn't play a big role and their land mass isn't that important, um, the Pentagon and the State Department, you know, the, the White House, um, all of these major U.S. institutions, they like to keep all options on the table. They do not like to just um, namby-pamby take things off the table. That's why the U.S. never pulls any troops out of anywhere. Uh, you know, we, we won World War II all the way back in 1945, yet there are still U.S. troops in Germany. Why is that? Well, U.S., they, they like to keep the option of being able to launch a war from Germany on the table. Even if the Germans have been properly subjugated, well, I don't know, look at those checks. They're looking awful. Uh, they're looking awful aggressive to me. Maybe those checks need to be taught a lesson. And so this is kind of the the theory behind uh, leaving U.S. troops everywhere all around the world. You know, I mean, just in the same sense, uh, the U.S. president is not going to come out and condemn the rape of Nanking. Uh, you know, there's there's no reason why the U.S. has any interest in antagonizing uh, the Japanese that way. Even it's something that, you know, we all know in normal conversation we would condemn as a horrible action if it was committed by a current ally. Uh, the United States, uh, in an a, uh, official sense, is never going to come out and, uh, you know, talk about those issues. And so, therefore, uh, if, uh, if Biden, again, is making these statements regarding Turkey and the Armenian genocide, uh, Turkey is, for all intents and purposes, no longer a valued, uh, you know, NATO ally of the United States. Uh, the the U.S. is not doesn't look at it as a pawn on the board anymore. Um, it's not something that concerns it, and that's a positive thing, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for everyone. Again, even if you're one of these Turks who's very offended that Biden would say this. Keep in mind what he's saying is that, uh, you know, you guys are more independent now. That's essentially what he's doing. I mean, even if you're a Turk, you should be celebrating this um, because uh, this is sort of a statement of the U.S. granting you independence. Now, we're not quite that far yet, but that's, that's what the signs are pointing to. That's what it seems like this statement means. And so if I were the Turks, I would use this. I think this would be a great opportunity to kick out the U.S. troops from Turkey. Get them out. Get them out. While you still can. And I think that, you know, Biden, by doing this, he's giving you an opening to do it. He's giving you an excuse to kick out the American troops. Now, if this is not what he's trying to signal, and let's say he sanctions Turkey for kicking out American troops, well, then uh, I'll apologize and I'll say that uh, this administration is just dumb and has no idea what they're doing. Because that's not what they're signaling. They're signaling, uh, you know, they're not signaling, hey, Turkey, you better not kick out the U.S. troops or else we're going to sanction you with SWIFT and make sure that you can't participate in international trade, which is what, um, you know, they tried to do uh, to Iraq, although not that exact sanction. What they did to Iraq was, hey, <laughs> 
all of your oil money is stored uh, you know, at a checking account at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. We're going to freeze your bank account um, if you try and kick out uh, U.S. troops. And so therefore, there are still U.S. troops in Iraq uh, because they would have bankrupted the entire country overnight by stealing their oil wealth. Not just stealing the oil, stealing the money. So the Iraqis have already you know, pumped it out of the ground and, <clears throat> and sold it. And now they have the money. Um, and that was what the Trump administration uh, threatened to steal from them. And so, you know, if Biden tries something similar with Turkey, if Turkey were to, in retaliation uh, for this statement, say, you know what, we're not an ally of the United States anymore. Uh, we don't want their troops around us. We don't want you, you know, occupying our land. Get out. Um, you know, Biden, if there's any real sense to this statement they put out, if there's any real strategy here, he would let that happen. And he would, you know, sort of... Uh, you know, say, hey, no, no hard feelings. <laughs> We're even now. So on that positive note, um, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.